it's tutorial time, baby. So today we're going to be learning about the genetic algorithm, which means we are going to be talking evolution. So if you happen to be a creationist and wish to remain that way, this video probably isn't for you because I'm basically going to be proving that evolution is a thing. Now that that's out of the way, let's begin. Welcome to Evan's four step recipe for a successful evolution. Step one, we're gonna need a base of natural selection. And step two, we're gonna need to spread on some passing of the genes to the next generation. For step three, we just sprinkle just a pinch, just a pinch of mutated babies and heat for 100 generations or until they're a crispy golden brown. Oh, looks like they're ready. Hmm. What do we have here? My, it's a well-evolved turtle monster with unrealistic stores of water in its body. Mmm, smells great. Okay, let's talk about these points a little more seriously because they are kind of important. The first step was natural selection. This is basically some cheeky survival of the fittest, meaning that the fitter a creature is, the more likely it is to live on and pass its genes to the next generation, which ties into step two. This is the trial and error approach to learning or evolving. For an over-the-top and unrealistic example, if a turtle mutated to have two frickin' cannons on its back, it's probably got a slightly better shot of surviving than its brethren. Thus, it's gonna have a pretty good chance of surviving long enough to mate and then pass on its beautiful cannon genes to its children. Those children are gonna dominate their generation and the super cannon gene is going to spread until it's the standard amongst turtles. Of course, in nature, the mutations are far less epic, but a shark might be born with stronger teeth or a penguin with thicker, more insulating fur? Wait, do penguins have fur? Ah, that's not something I needed to see today. Anyway, the point is these minor changes can have a big change in the likelihood of their parents passing down their genes to the next generation, who will then further mutate into even hairier babies until you have these. Ha ha. So majestic. Okay, let's get nerdy. Specifically, how can we simulate this process using computer science? I'm gonna describe the process more generally in this video, but I will do a coded example of how all this stuff is implemented. Anyway, put simply, the steps we outlined in our recipe become functions in our program. Before we start cycling through the algorithm, we are going to need to create our population. The population contains all the creatures which are going to be competing against each other. Each creature is just randomly generated. So at the start, they've got no idea what they're doing. Now, let's enter the algorithm. So first up, natural selection. This becomes the fitness function, in which we evaluate the fitness or likelihood of survival of each specific creature in the population. For example, with my most recent project, the fitness function was based on how long the dinosaurs lasted. So a dinosaur which survived the longest will have the largest fitness. These fitnesses help us choose which creatures are fit to reproduce. From these chosen creatures, we create a new population. Now we have a new population of babies. And what do we need to do with them? Say it with me. Three, two, one. We mutate those babies. <laughs> Sorry, that's a terrible thing to say. But doesn't mean it's not true. So we apply random mutations to some of the babies in the generation and voila, we have a fresh batch of creatures. Now we need to calculate the fitness of these creatures in this generation and select the creatures which are fit to breed, then mutate their babies and rinse and repeat until you get this. Magic. That's kind of all for this tutorial. Although I guess I use the word tutorial lightly. A waste of time is probably more applicable. I talked earlier about doing a coded video and that should be coming out in a few days for anyone who wants to learn the specifics of how you actually program the genetic algorithm. This is just kind of a brief overview. I'll be doing a few of these tutorial like videos in the future covering all topics, hopefully up to and including how to implement NEAT because that's kind of the reason I wanted to do these tutorials in the first place because finding material on how to do NEAT, that's a bad time. There's almost nothing online. So I thought it would be cool to get get some out there. Anyway, let me know what you thought of this video. This is obviously the first time I've done this sort of tutorial like thing. So if you have any thoughts on how to improve, I would love to hear your ideas down in the comments. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.